Welcome to another edition of What's Next and uh, What's Next in Finance and Banking. And uh, Gheri Furi is the Chief Executive Officer of Capitec Bank, one of South Africa's most successful banks and one of South Africa's youngest banks, achieving so much in short, such a short space of time. Gheri, uh, a very good morning to you. I see you've got the, the map of the world behind you as the Chief Executive Officer of Capitec Bank. I bet you you missed the traveling. How has lockdown been for you and how's it been running such a big organization like Capitec Bank, uh, I imagine you've been working remotely as well since March. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yeah, it's actually quite interesting. I think if you uh, said to me um, in the beginning of the year, you would be running the bank out of my office here at the home for four, what is it now, four and a half months, I would have laughed. Uh, it's now four and a half months and yeah, I've never been back to office. Uh, so we're doing everything remotely and it's, it's changed the world um, and it's changed the way we operate. But I think there's good and bad. Um, I think if you look at the, the good, there's a lot of inefficiencies uh, with traveling. And, you know, I, I take myself going to Joburg. I used to do two, three trips a month. Uh, I, I think I'll probably do now about five or six tri trips a year um, because you can do everything on Teams or Zoom or whatever you, you want to use. Uh, yeah. I think where, where it's, 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 it's where the challenge is, is is actually on your staff. Uh, how do you connect with your staff? How do you engage with your staff? How do you get culture going? Um, uh, how do you uh, strategize uh, that brainstorming sessions? That's what we're missing. And that's what we're focusing on a lot now. Um, and I think the other, the most important for me is really understanding your client um, because you know uh, we spend a lot of time in the branches uh, talking to our consultants talking to our clients uh, just walking the streets you understand what's happening in South Africa but the yeah. four or five months you've actually sitting at home and uh, you've been locked down and you don't really understand um, the, 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 how the client's behavior has is, is, is changed so that for us is a big focus uh, to make certain that we can look at that you know, Harry, that's so interesting. You know, so many people talk about the company culture and like connecting with your team and everything. I mean, it's great that we've got the redundancy of having this platform that we're on right now. Um, and you talk about those challenges. Have you overcome the challenges of connecting with the team and the company culture? H how have you kept that going over the last few months? I mean, aside from using Teams and Zoom and all of the other platforms, how, how, how have you managed to keep everyone connected and motivated is my question. Yeah, I think, you know, um, we, what we've done deliberately is uh, we've got live better talks uh, where we bring in um, certain exco members, certain uh, other team members, um, middle management, senior management. Uh, that's always on a Thursday morning and then there's general uh, uh, conversations. The other thing is, especially in those first um, four or five weeks, uh, we communicated with our staff the whole time um, on different platforms. Um, and then uh, we've got town halls. Uh, we call it town halls. Um, that's where we get uh, all our people of a different department or function together. And then there's very specific topics. And we had one uh, on Wednesday where I addressed all um, mercantile uh, bank. Um, so it's communicate, communicate, communicate um, the whole time. So we've done a lot of lot of that, but you know that there's nothing that beats you face to face. <laughs> yes, I think that's, no, that's, that's what, what's going to happen now and that's what we're working on now. So, Harry, I mean, you guys are quite a, a young bank uh, compared to the other older banks that have been around for such a, a, a long time, and you've had such incredible success. I know that next year you're going to be celebrating your 20th birthday, for example, and um, it, it's quite interesting when you guys started, uh, you know, almost 20 years ago, the, the banking world was different, um, but you were very much a digital bank, making things easier, cutting away a lot of redundancies and adding a lot of value to your customers. How has COVID-19 um, changed a lot of your business operations in terms of accelerating the stuff that you wanted to do? I know that you have many operations in the cloud and there's a lot of digital stuff happening, but has it accelerated a lot of the things that you were planning to do, uh, fast forward them because of COVID-19? 
Yeah, uh, you know, if I look at our uh, book of work, that's our, uh, all our projects for the year, it was probably based uh, on, let's say, 50% physical, where the client is actually coming into the branch, uh, and about 50% digital. Um, when when the lockdown happened, uh, we've changed that immediately, and it's now about 90% uh, digital and 10% um, physical. So. The area what what is the interesting one is where, where we've seen the biggest change in South Africa is actually in your call centers um, because uh, digitally there's a take up for sure uh, but the biggest take up was in our call centers where your volumes basically doubled because what is happening now is the guy is sitting or the person is sitting at home and it's quite easy now to pick up the phone and, and phone the call center. Um, we need to change that behavior to say, but you can, you're finding the call center, but you can do it yourself. Um, yes. So we, we're spending a lot of time on our call centers. It's interesting with COVID. Um, I remember in February, I still challenged our team and said, but we should be able to have our call centers working from home um, and we should yeah. be flexible and we should be able to, on peak days, bring people in, uh, housewives, students, etc. And they said to me, it's impossible. Uh, and 10 days within lockdown, uh, all our call centers, 1,500 people were working from home. Uh, and they're still working from home. <laughs> so I just showed you, I think that's, that's probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned in uh, COVID is how quickly people can change their minds uh, and how quickly you can do things if you're forced. Um, and I think uh, it, it just shows you again, you know, when it comes to leadership, what you can do if you really get people to focus and really think out of the box. And I think that's what we need to do going forward. That's amazing. You know, Harry, you, you, you hear this so often and um, people saying that what seemed impossible before the lockdown became impossible within days. You've yeah. just raised such a great example of that in your own business, and that's just amazing to hear. Um, and, and the innovation that uh, it's having, is, is FinTech having a, a massive impact to your business at the moment? Where, where do you see the, the banking world with FinTech dovetailing? And I know they cross over barriers uh, quite a few times, but how much of an impact is FinTech having? No, I think, you know, uh, three, four years ago, fintech companies thought they will be able to take banks over and they're going to disrupt banks completely. I think that has changed quite a lot. Uh, and I think it's much more a partnership uh, approach. Um, you know, I always say with fintechs, they've got very, very smart ideas. Uh, but the two challenges they've always got is security and volumes. Um, you know, we're sitting with 14 and a half million clients and that is quite a lot of volumes that you need to handle and quite a lot of security that you need to, to, to handle. So, it's, so the moment you're working with a fintech, those are the two questions that normally comes in. So we see uh, the fintechs as very important going forward, but we believe more in a partnership uh, approach to optimize the client experience. And I think the whole platform um, basis that everyone is now starting to work on gives you that ability to plug in, plug out. Because uh, yeah. I think you're going to use FinTech company A and he's, the person is going to have a very good client solution today. But uh, a year from now, somebody else is coming with a better, better solution. So you need to have that flexibility to be able to plug in and plug out. Harry, you talk about your 14 and a half million customers and certainly uh, behavior of consumers in every aspect. Uh, the way we shop, for example, we're seeing e-commerce changes. Um, and I imagine in the banking world, there must be changes as well. Are you seeing any interesting uh, changes that your customers are adopting um, during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown period? I think if you look at changes, and I'm, I'm, uh, we're currently debating it uh, in our Exco teams is, if, if you look at your higher income clients um, that were sitting at home and at uh, Teams or Zoom uh, and could go to digital, there you're seeing a big sw uh, uh, swing um, because people are sitting at home and, and ordering food or whatever. Uh, yes. If you look at your lower uh, 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 income uh, levels, I don't think that swing is, is, is that, that big. Uh, because they're still very big uh, cash dependent. Um, and that's actually where I want to, I'm itching to go out in the field and to really go and see what, what is happening. Um, because I always say, you know, it's quite easy. You can't compare South Africa with Europe. Um, 
because your your level of, of your your client is different and and mm. the adaptability is different. So one needs to understand the different client bases and understand how COVID is actually affecting them. Uh, but I, I thought you were going to see, for example, on your lower incomes, a big um, reduction in cash. Um, it's a very small reduction. People are still very cash nice, and we would love to get them actually uh, away from cash onto card and QR payments, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's the, that's the challenge that we need to take on. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. I mean, Harry, um, I'm sure you, you you know this. I mean, it's no secret that our economy is in big trouble. Um, we've got massive challenges uh, ahead of us. And I mean, in, in a way, if you look at when your bank started uh, 19 years ago, we were kind of in a similar financial situation. I'm not, I don't think it was quite as bad then as it is today. But um, as one of the, uh, you know, chief executive officers of one of South Africa's leading banks. Uh, when you look at our economy, what do we need to do to stimulate the economy in your view? And how are we going to get this economy backfiring again and get it back to the levels that it was, you know, a, a decade ago? Well, I've, I've said it many times uh, in media where, you know, the one thing we've learned um, with Capitec is if you focus, then everyone um, d delivers on what you're focusing on. Uh, so you should be having one or two very clear objectives. Um, and I think our biggest challenge is, and our president should have one focus, and that is to grow the economy. And then he's 25, 26 uh, ministers must all talk the same language, and it must go about how do we grow? Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I know transformation is very important. Um, but where we are now, we need to create jobs. And if you create jobs and you can can, uh, can get unemployment down, then uh, then you can focus on, on transformation. So for me, it's that focus on, on, on growth. I think what is very important is that there must be a trust relationship between government and the private sector. There must be open communication. Um, and, and, and really, let's get the the skill levels of the private sector um, helping government to focus and announce because there's for me there's there's two big areas that we need to f focus us on is infrastructure um, um, i'm not going to talk about corruption and all of those things but uh, inf infrastructure and then the other big area for me is is education um, because uh, our our quality of our, our education is, is is actually terrible. Uh, if you look at the amount of money that we're spending on it, and if you really want to lift somebody up to a higher level, you need to educate him. Uh, we need engineers, we need doctors, we need accountants. Um, uh, that's coming through, um, and and that must be a tremendous focus is to get uh, education going. And I think that's where. If you look at the digital world, the Zooms, the Teams, that's, I believe, where we can do much more. Because if you really look at a school, why is a school only operating from 8 to 1, um, that big infrastructure? Why can't it not operate uh, three sessions? Um, why can't it not operate in completely digital? Uh, if you look at the universities, the way they've gone in the lockdown by switching the students over to um, uh, digital platforms. So I believe there's so many opportunities that you can do on the education side, but that will be for me one of the biggest focuses of education in South Africa. Wow, such uh, optimism there, Harry. Thank you so much. Great to hear that uh, coming from, from from a person like yourself. Um, and and the message I'm hearing is we've got to do this together. We all have to pull in the right direction, and that's what's going to turn the tide, I guess. Um, 19 years today. Um, next year in March, Capitec celebrates 20 years in business. Are you planning anything special? And where do you see Capitec in the next 20 years? No, we're not. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. We uh, we uh, plan actually to celebrate moving into one office uh, because we were uh, yeah Techno Park in Cape to, uh, in Stellenbosch. We were in 13 offices and we then built our own uh, head office. And the whole plan was to get everyone under one roof and you, you can really get that teamwork uh, going. And then uh, the first 500 moved in and then COVID came and then we were sitting from home. So <laughs> we were planning to celebrate the new office in, in, in May. Um, so we, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to celebrate uh, uh, as we're not, we're not very fussed about those things. I think for yes. us it's much more important to look at 
especially five years ahead. What is what is what can we do? What can we do differently? Challenge yourself. How do you optimize things? You know, we've built, we bought Mercantile, um, so there's massive opportunities. We believe in the SME uh, uh, world. And then even on, on the retail side, um, you know, one of our passions is to how do you make certain that your clients fully understand their financial positions, that they can really read their bank statement and really understand what is the best way to mm. be banking and what is the best way to budget. Interesting. Uh, so um, that's where our passion lies, is to make banking as simplistic as possible so that the client really understand what is happening with his money. Uh, and we've still got a long way to go there. So that will be a big focus uh, for ourselves um, going forward. Fantastic. Uh, Harry, uh, my last question to you, and I've been asking this to all the different CEOs I've been chatting to, and, and certainly these times have been very different for all of us, and we're processing things differently and seeing things differently. Um, for you personally, running one of South Africa's biggest banks, and it could be on your personal life at home, etc., what's been your aha moment? Uh, something that you never saw coming, something that you thought, wow, that's interesting, I didn't think about it that way. Has Harry Furi, the Chief Executive Officer at Capitec Bank, had an aha moment in the last three, four months? Well, I think I, I, I referred to it um, is that by not traveling and not understanding the client, you, you're missing that. Uh, I had to fly up to Joburg um, to do business uh, and I stayed with my sister and my whole plan was flying up and then I will buy a uh, flowers at Woolworths um, and then <laughs> then arrive at her and say thank you at least and then suddenly you realize but the whole second floor of, of Oliver Dumbo is closed and the Woolworths is closed um, and then you suddenly say to yourself you know about sitting at home uh, do you really understand what's happening in, in around you what is really happening with the client uh, how's the clients experiencing it um, because we all of us just go and, and buy food or one or two things but yes. we're not we're not looking at, 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 at what is really happening. Um, so, you know, I was this weekend um, on, in Armanis and I was, the whole Saturday I was strolling and observing and, and trying to understand what is happening in the economy and what's happening with the different shops and where you're going to see changes. So I think that is that, you know, we, we, we had, you, you were running the business normally, then you had COVID and you had a four months lockdown and you were housebound and you actually, yeah, you lost touch with reality um, and with really with our client base. Um, so I think that for me is, is the most important thing that, 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 well, that's definitely what Capital is going to focus on, making certain that we fully understand our client and Absolutely. what is changing. Exciting. Absolutely fascinating. Harry Furi, Chief Executive Officer at Capitec Bank. Thank you so much for your insights and thank you for your time. And we wish you and Capitec Bank every success and your next two decades in business and long into the future. Thank you for your time. Stay safe and be well. Thank you very much. 